So I was having a conversation with somebody the other day about historical data, saying, where can I access this historical data from? And I said, well, there's loads of places you can get this data. And I said to him, but be aware, data mining is statistical, or can be, statistical deja vu. And I thought it would make for a good video. If you want instant access to new videos as they're uploaded, then please click on the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to comment on the videos. And if you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial. So what did I mean by data mining is statistical deja vu? Well, it's actually really hard when you're looking at data or a system or a process uh, to not accidentally influence it. And if you have something that you think is working, then one of the problems that you could easily have is that when you're analyzing data, you end up finding it within that data and you end up accidentally discarding stuff that doesn't confirm what you're looking for. So it's actually really hard doing uh, proper statistical data analysis and looking at historical data because you're deliberately trying to be absolutely impartial. And very often I will get somebody else to process information for me because that way I know that I don't accidentally insert uh, uh, biased information into what I'm attempting to do. So yeah, it's important to understand that uh, you can do that, that it is possible that you can accidentally insert information that you didn't intend or draw conclusions based upon what you're actually looking for as opposed to being completely impartial. So that's the difficulty with looking at historical data. You also have this problem that very often data is used incorrectly as well. So the, the best example I, I can give you of this is the gambler's fallacy. So if you go to a roulette table and red comes up 10 times in a row, that actually influences what people think is going to happen next. So they sort of think, well, there have been you know, eight, 10, 20, 450 reds in a row. Maybe, maybe at 450, you would be a bit concerned, <laughs> but there have been a lot of reds in a row and therefore um, that's going to influence the outcome of the next spin, uh, which is complete rubbish. That just isn't the case. If you have a random event or an event that occurs at a given frequency and you have a run within that event, then that doesn't necessarily influence the outcome of the next event. Um, you know, you have to believe that that is not the case and you'd have to find evidence as to why that is the case uh, and back it up if you felt that that really was going to be uh, that particular situation. And you tend to find this happens within football. So if you look at all of the football stats that are produced, they tend to go along the line of um, Man United has done this or Crystal Palace have done this if they're playing this type of team or they've won three in a row or so on and so forth. So all of the data that you see that gets retweeted and sometimes I retweet it as well, um, is based upon historics and it, it doesn't necessarily relate to exactly what's going to happen. So it sort of says, you know, so-and-so, when so-and-so have gone one goal up after this period of time, um, they have not conceded a goal uh, from this point onwards. And the problem is, is that actually really doesn't tell you anything. All that tells you is what actually happened in the past. It doesn't tell you what's going to happen in the future. So the solution to the historical data problem and all of the biases that you can insert into it and the gambler's fallacy is that you have to come up with a model. You say, based upon this happening in the past, what tends to happen in the future? And when you do what has happened in the past, what tends to happen in the future, you come up with a percentage. So it will say, if a team has scored this many goals over the last five matches and over the last 10 matches or in this style and in this way, then this is the chance of that occurring in the future. Um, it shouldn't directly influence it, but it should produce a probability of something occurring at some point in the future. And um, so therefore the answer to all of these things is to use historical data to model a market, to say, if this has occurred in the past, how did that lead us to what happens in the future? And how did that occur? What was the mechanism, the mechanics behind that particular process? So yeah, I have absolutely enormous amounts of historical data, but what I do is I don't use it to confirm a system I use it to model because that gives me the great ability to be able to say based upon all the information that I have available to me and looking at this thing and that thing and that thing and this thing all of these variables what do they tend to translate into over here and that can actually be incredibly useful because you can sort of answer questions that you haven't come across that perhaps aren't even in the data you can actually project forward and look at things that could happen at some particular point
So for example, uh, a team is scoring first in a football match. I know based upon the start of the data that we see within the match and various other factors, uh, what chance the home team have of scoring first within a particular match. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm saying based upon my model, this is the chance that I attribute to them of scoring first in this particular match. Whereas if you sort of say, um, if they haven't scored after 15 minutes uh, so far this season, uh, then they, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you're using historical data, that may mislead you uh, because you're waiting it too much upon what has just happened or the information within that data set. You're not actually predicting anything. So yeah, my solution always is, yes, use historical data, but use it to form a model of what could happen in the future. And that will necessarily assign a probability and that will be very accurate over time. And try and avoid waiting your search for a, a process or a system to one specific data set. Uh, use that data set to come up with a theory on expect of what you're going to expect to see in the market. If you can describe why that is the case, then you can use that as a model to project forward and into the future. And that is the best way to look at historical data and to use that information. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, visit BetAngel.com and download a free trial today.